Welcome to today's COVID-19 update. We're speaking with the Honourable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. Minister Anthony, again, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to start off by asking you, uh, persons are still a bit skeptical about taking the COVID-19 vaccines, but we've had uh, reports of death, and I wanted you to comment on that because um, I, I know people are logging it together, and I just needed a little clarity on the efficacy of these vaccines that we have? The vaccines that we currently have in Guyana and those that are, I would say, globally, they are all very good vaccines. They work, they are effective, they are safe. Um, as of uh, this week, the WHO would have said about 2.2 billion persons uh, would have received uh, vaccines. So. We know that these vaccines are working and they're protecting people from getting the disease. We have started our campaign maybe about 14 weeks ago. And since then, we have had a number of persons who would have received both doses of the vaccine. And all of those persons who would have received both doses of the vaccine, none of them have been hospitalized. None of them have come to the ICU and none of them would have died from COVID. So if there's any uh, proof that anyone would like to have, in a sense, here is the proof that this thing is working. Because none of those persons have come to the hospital or, or die from COVID. So it's very clear, if you take both doses of the vaccine, you are going to be protected. And that's what we want people to be safe and protected. So I really want to urge everyone uh, to make sure you take your vaccine, get both doses, and once that happens, you are going to be protected. All right. I know right now you're encouraging persons to take the AstraZeneca and the Sinopharm because those are available. Uh, for those persons still awaiting the Sputnik V, uh, just to reassure them that um, we're still within that time frame uh, for you to get the second dose. You're sure. Mm -hmm. So we've been using three vaccines here in Guyana. Uh, we have been using Sputnik V, we have been using AstraZeneca, and we have been using Sinopharm. The AstraZeneca and Sinopharm is basically the same vaccine that you get for first dose. You get the same thing as your second dose. And we, when we receive those vaccines, we divide them in half, so we kept back half for persons who would have received the first dose to be able to get their second dose. So we have adequate supply of both of those vaccines. So everyone who would have received their first dose, Sinopharm or AstraZeneca vaccine, we have your second dose. Now, the first do af after the first dose, we want you to come back at least four weeks after to make sure that you get your second dose. So that goes to Sinopharm. Between four weeks to 12 weeks, any time within that period, you can come back for your AstraZeneca second dose. And for the Sputnik V, initially we were saying after four weeks, uh, now the, we have received information from the Gamaleya Institute, the people who would have manufactured Sputnik V, and they're saying that you can get your second dose within four weeks to 12 weeks. Now, we have, um, as we have said before, uh, we have AstraZeneca in country, we have Sinopharm in country, so for those two vaccines, come and get your second dose. For the Sputnik V, which is a totally different vaccine for your second dose, uh, we don't have in country right now, but we are making uh, the arrangements to make sure that we can get it in as soon as possible. And as soon as we get those vaccines in, because I know a lot of people have been eagerly awaiting to, for the second dose to come in, as soon as we get it in, we'll announce it so that across the country people can go and get their second dose Sputnik V. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, as we're on the topic of the vaccines, what are our current uh, numbers? So currently we have 223,659 persons who would have received their first dose uh, vaccine. 
that would uh, account for 45.9% of our adult population. And uh, for those persons who have received a second dose, we have 92,157 persons who would have received their second dose vaccine. Uh, that would account for approximately 18.9% of our uh, adult population. Okay, thank you. Uh, just, I, I wanted to go back to something you mentioned in the National Assembly. You spoke about the health centers that are slated for upgrade. I just wanted some additional information on, on those. Well, it's, it's quite a lot of health centers. I think we have a list of more than 27 health centers. And we also have a few hospitals that we'll be working on, but I can get the list for you. Thank you, sir. Um, I have a question from HGP TV Nightly News. They're seeking a comment on the recommencement of two programs at the Charles Rosa Nursing School, which were reportedly suspended a few weeks ago. They said a student is alleging that although the program programs have resumed, only five students were called in to continue. Can you shed any light on that? As we said before, the intake of students into that program were disproportionately from Region 10 and that school caters for um, people from the hinterland and also people from Region 10. So the admission persons who have been working on admissions into the program went back, they spoke with each of the regions and they have been able now uh, to review the applications that were already in from those regions and so they have given priority to regions 1, 7, 8, and 9, and along with 10. So if we have 30 spaces, they have apportioned it to the different regions so that you can have persons from those regions getting an opportunity to be able to come to the school. Initially, it was predominantly from region 10, almost less than 10 persons from all the other regions. So we have reversed that to give everybody an equal opportunity so that they can get training. The other big challenge we have is that in Region 10, we have in excess of 300 and something nurses that really, we, while we have employed them, uh, they're in excess in Region 10. In other regions, like Regions 1, seven, eight, and nine, we have deficits. We don't have enough. And when we attempt to send nurses from Region 10 to these regions, they don't want to go. So the better thing now, as we are training people, is to train from those regions so that they'll go back to their, uh, their regions and be able to serve there. And that's why we, are, we, we have rebalance. Uh, the intake of students. All right, Minister, thank you so much uh, for that clarity. Uh, yesterday, uh, just finally yesterday, we spoke about the uh, drive-through campaigns and so on. I understand that Region 3 has confirmed? Yeah, but there are, there, there are a number of other regions that are looking at drive through So you have in Region 3, I think they're doing theirs on Saturday. We have in Region 2, they're at the Anna Regina um, car park on Friday and I think we have one that is organized for Port Morant in Region 6. Okay, all right sir, thank you so much uh, for speaking with us today. Sure, no problem. Well, that's it for today's COVID-19 update. Of course, we just spoke with the Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony. Remember, for more information, you can log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and the Ministry of Health's website as well, health.gov.gy, and of course, our social media platforms.